This is Pastor Kirk again with the third in our series of uh, messages or discussion starters on uh, Christmas, Advent, and so forth. And we're going to look at chap Luke chapter 2 uh, today. One of the things that we've been looking for, talking about, everybody talks about peace, but nobody knows what it is and nobody knows how to get it. So we're gonna, that's what we're going to talk about. Can we have some peace, please? Do you find Christmas stressful? I do. And isn't it time of goodwill? Isn't it amazing? We still have time to fight. I don't know if this has been true in your house. When our kids were younger, they'd get so antsy and excited they couldn't stay still. As the anticipation rose, the emotions became more fragile. And it gets so bad that fights would literally take place over dessert. But in keeping with the spirit of Christmas, I want to give you a gift. It's a solution, if you will, that will solve any problems you might have regarding desserts. The solution is a dirt that, dessert that no one will fight over. Fruitcake. So now let me include in my annual spirit of making fun of fruitcake. Let me offer the top 10 uses of fruitcake. Number 10, use slices to balance that wobbly kitchen table. Number nine, use it instead of sandbags during times of flooding. Number eight, one word, pincushion. Number seven, use it as railroad ties. Number six, use it as speed bumps to foil the neighborhood drag racers. Number five, collect 10 and use them as bowling pins. Warning on this one, they might dent your bowling ball. Number four, Use them instead of cement shoes. Number three, save them for next summer's garage sale. Number two, use slices in next skeet chewing shooting competition. Number one, send it to the United States Air Force and let our troops drop them as our new secret weapon. But you know, we do know you know that last one it's a little more outrageous. We do know knew that war war is looming on the horizon. I'm sure that saddens most of us. We would rather not be in this in the position of being poised for war. In fact, this is the time of the year that we'd rather be thinking peace. That reminds me of a newspaper headline I saw once that excelled in stating the obvious. It said, War dims hope of peace. Yeah, duh. Uh, that would be true. Nevertheless, I do want to reassure you today. We rejoice in a God who brings peace. But you know, when we look at the world today, it seems distant, doesn't it? In many ways, we're still reeling with the crumbling of the Twin Towers. We've, we've been searching for Bin Laden over the years. We've uh, had lots of conflicts over Israel and Afghanistan, Iraq and Indonesia and Bangladesh and Sudan and Zimbabwe, North Korea, Venezuela, Colombia, Vietnam, all kinds of places. So let me ask you, is there peace anywhere in this world? Uncertainty really seems to characterize our times. I don't know, but I wonder if the time isn't so far away that the acts of terrorism will become more frequent on our shows. We've had all kinds of uh, folks that have uh, left grenades in trash cans. Uh, they've opened fire on college campuses and even on high school campuses. Uh, wouldn't it be great if we could lay down the weapons of war? And all those billions of dollars we spend on military uses can use, use to feed the hungry, 
to furnish housing for the homeless and to put clothes on the poor. But lest you think that I'm one that uh, is championing that, I know better. I know that's not in the cards, not necessary, even though there are some and some who call, count themselves as my friends who would disagree me, with me on that. We're not the only ones to live in such an uncertainty. 2,000 years ago, the little country of Israel longed for freedom from their oppressor Rome. And if we look back into Israel's history, we know they longed for a peacemaker. They were looking for their Messiah King that the prophet Isaiah spoke of. He said, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name should be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. They long for the Prince of Peace to come and rule them. But though they long for it, the peace seemed far away. It seemed like God had forgotten. And yet, another surprise was coming. One night, the world changed. And the dream of peace became a reality. Here's how the story goes. Luke chapter 2, beginning verse 8 same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night an angel lord appeared to them the glory of the lord shone around them and they were filled with fear and the angel said to them fear not for behold i bring you good news of great joy will be for all the people for unto you is born this day in the city of david a savior who is christ the lord and this will be a sign for you you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and earth, on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased and the angels went away from them in heaven the shepherds said to one another let's go let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened and the Lord has made known to us and they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Just like the angels and the shepherds, the reason rejoice continues to exist. For though we look at a world that lacks peace, peace is not as elusive as we think. It's something we can rejoice in. So in verse 14 of Luke 2, we find, yeah, we find three reasons why we rejoice in a God who brings us peace. Before we get give a focused look at the angels' song, let's pause for a moment and be the shepherds. You're minding your own business. You're out in the fields. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing, tending the sheep. When out of nowhere, you're literally scared by the appearance of a heavenly being who tells you <laughs> not to be scared. Okay? Like that was possible. Then after you settle down, the angel tells you the good news. The Messiah has arrived. But you know, if one angel didn't scare you, imagine what a whole army of them will do to you. Because that's what happened next. And in unison, they proclaim a message of peace. Another one of the songs I alluded to uh, last week. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. See, they proclaim a message to rejoice and the first reason we rejoice is the reaction. One of the, one of the hymns that we sing around Christmas time is, Angels from the realms of glory, wing your downward flight to earth. Ye who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship. Worship Christ, the newborn king. See, for the angels, it was time to give praise to God. The angels were reacting appropriately to the big news. These angels have associated with the Son of God in heaven before the incarnation. They knew something of his glory, riches, and majesty. And they're in awe of God's plan. And they hold nothing back in their praise. They're giving everything they have to communicate the good news, even to humble and perhaps rascally shepherds. 
They do this because salvation is worth celebrating. God didn't give up on the creation that, he, that had given up on him. He sought to redeem those that did not deserve redeeming. He sought to recreate and bring order to those that lived lives of disorder and chaos. See, God was showing mercy and grace. It was the observation of the angels. God was moving toward man. After Adam, there had been no peace since the garden. And as a result, there had been no peace within us. See, we're filled with turmoil and dissatisfaction. And because there's no real lasting contentment on the inside of us, and no peace outside of us, the world, as you know, is not a peaceful place. Stated simply, we need help. The angels, though, have come to tell a marvelous story of the incarnate God. Help has arrived. God has reached down to man. The King of Glory, because of great and pure love, has left his throne, has laid aside his crown, and has become an infant in a feeding trough. The shepherds could take heart because the Prince of Peace had arrived. So the angels sang the good news. It was something men could understand. It was news that they ought to understand. And it was news which would make people much better if they will understand it. God has stooped from his throne. He has become a babe, nursing on a woman's breast. The Messiah King has come, ready to usher in a lasting, eternal peace. And the third reason is the reception. It's also recognized by the angels. God was extending favor to the undeserved. The Lord has good will to men. God is not some tyrant. He desires what's good and best for each one. And he's gracious. He's willing to pardon. In fact, he desires to pass by our iniquity and our transgressions. He does not want to hold them against us, so he reaches to us. He extends his favor to us as a gift to be received. Reconciliation of God's agenda for man is found as the Apostle Paul describes it in Romans 5.1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's God who says, Welcome home, weary pilgrim. Welcome to the Father, rebellious son. Welcome to the throne, sinful traitor. <coughs> Welcome to receive the favor I have for you. Welcome to receive the peace I long to give you. So let me ask you this very simple question today. Are you reconciled to God? While we hope for an earthly peace, and it's something we should seek, there's a peace that is even more, more important. It's a peace with God. And it's a peace that he offers. On March 10th in 1974, Lieutenant Hiro Anada was the last World War II Japanese soldier to surrender. Oneida had been left on the island Lubang in the Philippines on December 25th, 1944, with the command to carry on the mission even if Japan surrenders. Four other Japanese soldiers were left on the island as Japan evacuated Lubang. One soldier surrendered in 1950. Another was killed in the skirmish with local police in 1954. Another was killed in 1972. Manada continued his war alone. An effort to convince him to surrender or to capture him failed. He ignored messages from loudspeakers announcing Japan's surrender and that Japan was now an ally of the United States. Leaflets were dropped over the jungle begging him to surrender so he could return to Japan. He refused to believe or surrender. Over the years, he lived off the land and raided the fields and gardens of local citizens. He was responsible for killing at least 30 nationals during his 29-year personal war. Almost a half million dollars was spent trying to locate and convince him to surrender. 13,000 men were used to try to locate him. Finally, on March 10, 1974, almost 30 years after World War II ended, 
Onada surrendered his rusty sword after receiving a personal command from his former superior officer, who read the term of the ceasefire. Onada handed his sword to President Marcos, who pardoned him. The war was over. Onada was 22 years old when he left on the island. He returned a prematurely aged man at 52. He stated nothing pleasant happened in the 29 years in the jungle. Like many people, or like or not, many people are fighting a lonely battle against the God who is offering reconciliation and peace. It's my call to them, it should be your call to them. It's time to stop fighting. You see, spiritual peace is within our grasp, and it's essential. Being at peace with God precedes all of the peace. As a result, we'll never know peace on earth until we realize that sin has separated us from God. Every Christmas, the reminder comes for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. The Savior has come. Let us rejoice today in a God who brings peace. Let us rejoice in the Eternal One who is caught in a moment of time. Let us rejoice in the Omnipresent One who is corralled in a cave manger. Let us rejoice in the Omnipotent, who is cradled in a helpless infant, who cannot even raise his head from the straw. Let us rejoice in the Omniscient, who is confined in a baby that does not say a word. Let us rejoice in the Messiah, who created the heavens and earth and became cooped up in the place of the created. Let us rejoice that God draws near to the cold, cruel, sinful, suffering humanity, so we can know his peace. We can be reconciled to him for eternity. So I ask you again, are you reconciled to God? We rejoice and bring in the God who brings peace. He's come to bring peace to the world. He's come to do it through you and through me. So be reconciled, know his favor, his goodwill his peace. Father, thank you for the peace that you give us. Now, Father, we pray that as we uh, worship you, as we trust you, as we uh, look at you, we pray that, Father, we might know your peace. We might know the beginning from the end and glorify you and be sure of your peace in our hearts and lives and then pass it on to others in this season. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.